All right, we've got a lot to cover, so I don't even have time to give this series a title. We need to head to Grickgate and grab our next quest. Now, if I was going to guess, I would say that a lot of people hit a wall around this point in Cud. I know I did. Maybe you get to Grickgate, which can be a bit of a challenge in its own right, but, well, our next task is nothing to scoff at. Without spoiling too much, we are going to be given a task to descend into Golgotha. When I started this series, I did so with the intention of ending it before we get to Golgotha, because Golgotha is, in many ways, Cud's first major dungeon. Well, uh, technically we've done two dungeons, Rustwells and Red Rock, but Golgotha is a different beast. Golgotha is the first dungeon which is designed with a malice intent, which actually seems to want to kill the player, rather than just stand as an obstacle. Defeat Golgotha, and you have taken your first real steps towards conquering Cud. So, how can I take that from you? I will not be guiding you through Golgotha, but rather give you the tools you need to defeat it for yourself. Give a man a radiated fish and they will only be sick for a week, but teach a man to fish in a contaminated river and they will uh, probably die. Th that didn't really work. Uh, I'm gonna move on. So I touched on this in the beginning, but story quests aren't necessarily your next priority. You will likely want to spend some time gearing up before you brave the story. A common mistake a lot of people make is to bite off more than they can chew and die. But if you take things slow, then you will be much better prepared. This goes back to that safe progression I was talking about. So, as promised, let's talk about the two skill trees I take every single CUD playthrough. Customs and Folklore and Tinkering. Trash Divining is an amazing skill which grants you a 5% chance to discover a secret when rifling through trash. Don't know what trash is? You've likely walked around or over it in the course of your run at some point. Trash literally litters many of the nooks and or crannies all over Cud, and yeah, 5% doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough to almost guarantee a useful tidbit of info from a pile of trash. Once you have Trash Divining, by the way, your character will zero in on it with the Audio Explorer, so don't feel like you need to actually pick through every pile. Since secrets and information is in many ways a currency in Cud, and because it can lead to reputation, better equipment, and, well, just about everything we need, I would deem trash divining as being a skill you should get every run. But there's more. Since we are rifling through trash, it also behooves us to dip into tinkering. Getting the scavenging skill in Tinkering 1 will be an important part of tinkering, and it will also make trash twice as valuable to us. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Just to preface for a second, I really don't want to give the impression that this is the correct way to play. I really like it, and I think there are great advantages to it, but there are many ways to play Cud, many of which I haven't tried. I really like tinkering because it tends to support many playstyles, but it is also kind of an attributes hog. Maxing out tinkering takes 29 intelligence. That is a lot, and you will also need to spend a lot of skill points just to dip into tinkering. But one of the advantages of raising your intelligence is that you get more skill points. And it works retroactively, so you gain a bunch of skill points depending on what level you are. Alright, so, tinkering. Remember all those weapons you saw and likely picked up for yourself which have an added effect? A flaming sword, an electrified mace, a willowy boot? Given enough resources, you can add those kinds of effects to any of your items. You can upgrade just about all of your equipment to be lighter, shield you from flash effects, add a little bit of oomph to your weapons. Doing so is not free, however, and requires a little bit of work. But I promise you, once you get tinkering going, it will pay off. So, when tinkering, we need two things. We need knowledge, and we need bits. Yes, more currency. Knowledge of making an item generally comes in the form of a data disk, which you can buy from other fellow tinkerers. You've already met a tinkerer, Argive, so you are already able to trade for data disks. There are also generally a few tinkerers at the Six Day Stilt, another reason why that place is so great. Just to squeeze an extra tip in here, the tinkerers at the stilt tend to have a bunch of trash in their shop, and they don't seem to mind you rifling through it, but I wouldn't be surprised if this gets patched out. I'm covering data disks as our method of gaining tinkering knowledge, but it isn't the only method. You can also learn how to make certain things from water-bonded friends in exchange for reputation. There's also a very useful mutation for learning schematics just by looking at an object. But trading rep isn't reliable or necessarily viable, and we're playing a true kin for now, so... Data disks. Data disks can be expensive, and depending on what the disk is for, it can be up to over a thousand drams. 
I will say don't go crazy buying data disks because the really expensive disks are for very late game stuff. Probably require tinkering three as well as require very difficult to obtain bits. Once you have a disk, you can read it and then you have that knowledge forever, regardless of how many times you make that thing. There are two different things you can tinker, by the way. You can make a thing, like a grenade or a cell, or you can mod something else, like a weapon. Definitely use L for look and take note of all the different data disks. Not all of them are helpful. But okay, okay, uh, we actually already have knowledge to make a thing. You get a free data disk when you buy Tinkering 1. So you don't need to go throwing precious water just to get started. I got lucky with a high capacity mod in this run, but it is random. So the second thing we need is bits. Using scavenging, you'll be grabbing bits here and there whenever you rifle through trash, but you'll want more, I promise. Buying the disassembling ability is highly recommended as it will allow you to break down many items into weightless bits. After you buy tinkering, you'll start to notice some letters and numbers next to certain items. This means that this item can be broken down. The letters and numbers next to an item tell you what kind of bits you can hope for if you break it down. I say hope because you aren't guaranteed to get all those bits, just some. But you can get a toolkit or an advanced toolkit to help this process. Okay, so you got some bits, right? Good. Now we can make a thing. You can hit K to get into the tinkering screen. Looking at the stuff we can make shows us a bunch of letters and numbers, and on the right here, we can see what the letters and numbers actually mean and how many we have. Just to simplify things, the closer to the top of the screen, the more commonplace these bits are. The closer to the bottom, the rarer. These guys at the bottom are very difficult to obtain, and this guy, well, I'm embarrassed to say I've never seen it in all of my time playing CUD. So just keep it in mind when you're buying data disks that if you can't get the bits, you're just throwing your water away. Buy the stuff you know you can make or that you know you can make soon and worry about the negative weight spheres and eater nectar tonics later. Concerning tinkering cost, cost to make an item will vary run to run, but the cost value is consistent. Meaning a simple or low value item will have a low cost to make, but the specific bits required will vary. Mods differ slightly as they have a base varying cost as well as a scaling cost depending on what you're modding. Meaning, if you're modding a bronze sword, it won't cost you an arm and a leg in bits, whereas modding a very valuable sword will. So, in order to gain the levels I needed to get tinkering, I did some grinding. Grind is the word I'm going to apply to this process, but I understand the negative connotations grind can seem like a chore. Not so in CUD. Grind is fun. Once you come to realize where it's safe to explore and what dangers to keep an eye on, Grind and Cud is like the best gacha game of all time. I mentioned before, but a great place to explore and progress yourself is the Great Salt Desert. But you can also do a little spelunking. Concerning spelunking. When spelunking, it is a good idea to keep an eye on what strata you are in. Just for context, the strata means how deep you are underground. The strata is indicated in the top right corner of the screen, and it is key to navigating the depths of Cud's underground labyrinth. Know that the further underground you go, the higher chance of meeting dangerous baddies. Stratas 1 to 5 are directly influenced by the zone you are in, so if you are, say, in the marshlands, things will be mild and tangy. But if you are 1 to 5 strata in the ruins, or, Resha forbid, the deathlands, then things are going to be Carolina Reaper spicy. Beyond strata 5, however, regardless of what zone you are in, things are going to get spicy, so just keep your strata depth in mind. In my time spent spelunking, I actually found a Betel. Betels are strange, sentient with their own faction, but more closely described as spatial rocks with a quest. They will ask you to obtain 5-ish of a random item. In my case, I was asked to get 5 sandals, a very lucky ask. They will let you know what they will give you in return in a vague description. A mighty weapon, a blazing cannon. These are generally very decent rewards in the form of mid to late level gear or even reputation. So as long as it doesn't cost you an insane amount, I highly recommend handing in Betel quests. I decided to comb the desert for random gear and then return to the stilt every few days to check in on the cobbler for some sandals. The desert is pretty empty outside of the Issachari tribe and some dawn gliders. The Dawn Gliders are admittedly pretty tough, but easy enough to avoid if given a wide enough berth. You can easily comb two tiles at once down the desert by hanging by the side, poking your head in the other tile alternatingly. If you poke your head into a dangerous tile, don't panic. You get about one turn of mercy before enemies take notice of you, so just head back to the other tile immediately. Since you'll be walking in a straight line, I'll let you in on an important tip. Never hold a directional button. Holding a movement or action button down is the equivalent to reverse bullet time. 
You will perform that action in rapid succession. But every time you move or perform an action, time moves forward. So if something dangerous is beginning to happen, you will likely not be able to react before it potentially kills you. If you need to move from one side of the screen to the other, press the W key and then a direction. Your character will move at a plenty brisk pace and also stop if they see something dangerous. Anyway, something we hope to find in the desert is some new friends. Remember how I said reputation can lead to new allies? Well here's a good tip. If you find someone who has a lot of trade on them and you have them join you, they will offer that trade to you for free. I met a legendary bird who wasn't a hugely tough fighter, but they had a ton of gear and items. I shared a dram and some secrets to increase my rep with their faction and then had them join me. Getting their gear isn't super intuitive, so let me walk you through it. After having them join you, hit the L to look and then highlight them when they're next to you. Then press space to interact with them. This will allow you to chat with them. Once chatting, enter the trade screen and you will see that all the stuff they offer is free. Be sure to leave them with some water though. They still drink, just like you, and fair warning, this may be something that gets nerfed, so maybe take advantage while you can. Once I got myself the scavenging skill and the disassembling skill, I was able to start collecting bits and secrets. Remember to keep an eye out for trash, as it will build up your collection of bits, and also keep in mind that anyone holding a gun is, well, they're holding something you can disassemble. Consider making time to unburden them of their weapons. Uh, violently. You can disassemble right in the get menu. But do know this takes in-game time, so maybe hesitate doing this when there are hostile enemies nearby. Another good source of bits is from turrets or robots. Some robots will tend not to attack you, but auto-place mines and turrets. You can take advantage of this and disassemble the mines, after you defuse them of course, for extra bits. You'll also tend to find bits for destroying the robots. Do be careful though, there are some very dangerous robots. After rifling through some trash, I found some secrets and pursued them. Going to your journal, you can highlight markers on the map for layers or ruins. Ruins are a great source of books and random loot, but they also come with their fair share of dangers. Their difficulty is usually reflected by the biome that they are in, so take caution. So, hey, good news, you're playing CUD. This is the grind, gathering water, equipment, reputation, visiting the stilt, selling our loot, tinkering some items. This is how we build ourselves up, slowly but surely. Once you learn to slow down, CUD opens up a lot more for you and feels less punishing. So let me talk about one last thing, pivoting. I said in the items and equipment episode that you should choose your playstyle and stick with it. I think this is good advice, however, I think there is something to be said about changing your mind. I wanted to make this a pistols build, but then I bought a rifle and found an electro bow, and now I found a sniper rifle. Both bows, rifles, and pistols are agility based, so it doesn't matter which I go with. But what does matter is what I have at my disposal. Wanting to make a pistol build is great, but what happens when we find a really good rifle? What if we've already bought into pistols? I would say, so long as you haven't built too far into a build, go ahead and pivot, because being good good with a good weapon is much more valuable than being great with an okay weapon. Your skills unlock the potential of a weapon, but some weapons are always just going to be okay. If you find an amazing pistol, pivot. You'll be glad you did. You can always just buy the first skill of the weapon and then pivot back later. Yeah, you spend some extra skill points, but so long as you're being smart about your points, you'll have enough to get everything you need in the end, especially if you were able to survive long enough. Just to put you at ease about this a little bit, remember that you can obtain skills from trading reputation. And there are also some cybernetics which unlock skills as well. So there's plenty of opportunities if you are worried you won't have enough points. Just to give you closure, I handed in my Betel quest and I got 800 reputation with Kyakukya. So what now? Well, this is where I would go to Golgotha. In many ways, this is the end of the basics. From here on out, we would get a lot more specific. If I was to tutorialize Golgotha, it would basically be a guide. This is not so much a guide as the basics of CUD. I want you to enjoy CUD and not rob you of the enjoyment I had by discovering much of the depth that Caves of CUD offered. But we aren't quite done. On the next episode, we will talk mutants, both Chimera and Esper, and Cooking and Gathering, aka Cud Alchemy. Here's the recap. Just to underline this because it is that important, take your time. Do not rush to the next story mission. We covered my two favorite skill trees, Customs Folklore and Tinkering. Tactful gives you more rep for sharing water, and Trash Divining gives you a 5% chance to find some secrets when rifling through trash. Scavenging and Trash Divining stack, so try to get both. Knowledge and bits are required to tinker. Data disks can be traded for to obtain the knowledge. Don't buy very expensive disks unless you're sure you have the bits. Bits are acquired by scavenging via trash and disassembling artifacts. Rifles and guns are a good source of bits. 
Keep an eye out for people or creatures wielding them. Robots are also a very good source of bits, as are the mines and turrets they place. Obtain a toolkit or advanced toolkit to improve the odds of getting bits from disassembling. The cost in bits for modding an artifact varies depending on the quality of the artifact. Spending rep to gain an ally can also gain you their trade for free. Press L to look while adjacent to your ally, highlight them and press space, and then enter the trade screen in order to access their trade. Never hold a direction or action button. Instead, use the W key and then select the direction to auto walk to the edge. Betels offer quests to find five or so of a random item. Hand these in if possible, they are generally worth it. Sticking to your build is good, but if you find the right weapon, pivoting can do a lot to improve your run. All right, that's it. If you found this video informative or helpful, make sure to... What? There's more? Please, this video, it's so long. They've added a new movement command. Backspace to move to point of interest? Dang! This will make visiting the different quest givers and merchants at the still way easier. Well, eh, anyways, be sure to subscribe for more CUD content. I'll see you guys next time.